Welcome to the third show of the 1994 season. Bob Beeler along with the head coach of the Bucknell University Bison, Lou Maranzana. The Bison have now won two in a row, going up to Boston and beating Harvard 42-23. to And coach, it was a game which you rolled up a lot of offense, 504 yards, uh, biggest road win in 22 games, biggest offensive output in 36 games. You guys had it in high gear on Saturday. We had some fun, you know, was, uh, being able to, to get into a setting like that. It's, uh, Good trip for us. Uh, I was pleased that we, we were able to play hard and uh, make some plays. We made some good plays and some big plays, and uh, we were able to play enough defense to, to, to keep it steady across the board. Good kicking effort. Uh, it was a good day. Uh, guys enjoyed it. That's what Saturday's supposed to be all about. Bison jumped on them early. We'll take a look at highlights from the first half right now. Bucknell would defer again, and I believe, Coach, it's the third time this year you guys won the toss. We, we practice that. You know, so we have a we have a flip drill that we do, uh, but uh, we basically feel like uh, we would like to kick the ball off and, and go down there and try and get some position. Harvard would get the ball first, and they would drive it down to about the Bucknell 35. They get stopped on third and one, and here they go for it on fourth down. We watch the officials on pile, and uh, it uh, again was a big stop in the game early. There was a third and short right before this also that they. You know, they got him into this situation. So really go to a couple of short yardage situations and uh, and stop him here. Big plays. Official wanting to bring the sticks out. He'll signal first down Bucknell. Great serve by the front eight for the Bison. And now it's going to be Rich Miller punting after an exchange of punts. And this is going to be a big play for you to get things going. So just an outstanding individual play here. John Caldwell uh, gets downfield, strips the ball, recovers it himself, and gives us an opportunity now to come right back and score. You decide to go for it on fourth and eight and get some help. Yeah, we, uh, we're in that area of the field where we don't really feel we get that much out of punting. And it's a little bit uh, outside of the field goal range, so we go for the fourth down. And how about the touchdown? Gloss to Gentilly, time one, wide open. Well executed play. Rob puts it right where it needs to be. Mark's in the right spot on the field. Outstanding job. Bison did a good job of capitalizing on their first turnover. And then once again, the kick coverage is pretty good. Harvard had a little trouble handling it. You got some guys down there making some hits. Yeah, I didn't, I didn't think we kicked it that well all the time, but fortunately they mishandled it and we got some real good covers on it. Russ Strohecker, the middle linebacker, leading the charge here. Strohecker now leads just five tackles with 300 in his career. We're going to see another turnover coming in the Harvard end of the field right here. It's another big play here. We've got him down to this end, and John Henry comes up with a big interception, gives us position once again here uh, to score. And then it's going to be a replay. Gloss to Gentilly, time number two. He's, uh, you know, the, the situation is exactly the same. The field position is the same. The defense was the same. So we were fortunate that we got right back into that situation. Why did it work so easily twice? Well, what I'm trying to tell you is that the situation was uh, almost identical. Why didn't uh, they do something different? Uh, I don't think there was really any reason. I think we did a good job of executing the play in both times. And again, you have to be very pleased that you've been able to take advantage of two turnovers and cash them in for maximum point value. Exactly. We've gotten the ball back and uh, been able to get the points out of it. And now we got to do is just play defense and keep rolling. Let's take a look at action a little later in the first half. Again, Bucknell is on top at this stage, 14 to nothing, and totally dominating the game. And uh, this Vin Ferrara, pretty tough little runner. Nice run here for about 15 yards. He's a good athlete and um, ran pretty well. He also made an outstanding throw for their uh, one pass touchdown. Harvard, whenever they would move the ball down for a score, it took 10 to 12 plays. They really had to work against your defense. Well, we, we we're hoping that as we play defense that we're making people work for everything they get and never gashing in the defense. And basically been able to do that. Ed Jackson's going to come down the line and make the tackle. He had a good game for it. Eddie has been very steady in all, in all three games, and he's really come on to be a, Coach Meenan calls a good senior player. Here's Ferrara throwing the ball to uh, Halligan for the score. That's just a great throw right between two defenders, a good coverage. Both a good throw and a good catch. So now it's 14 to 7, and Richard Lemon would run for over 100 yards again for the seventh time in a row. He's now fourth in the NCAA in rushing. I think what you see there is just what's typical of his running, and that's just he's always working hard. Here's Steve McHugh getting some important yards as well. And Rob Gloss peeling back and throwing long 54 yards to John Sikowski, seven yards in the clear, giving up the break stride. Doing the right things at the right time. We're able to, the free safety got a little bit out of the middle there, uh, and John came back and made a nice move, and Robbie put it right on time. So Bucknell is in front 21 to 7. And you're, the only part of the game that I really thought maybe something you need to work on had a little trouble hanging on to some points. 
We made two turnovers in kick games, uh, our returners, one on the punt and one on the kickoff, and lost both of them, which are a concern for us and something that we're going to work real hard on. But your defense up to the task. Willie Jackson, who's Patriot League Rookie of the Week, had a couple of interceptions, and this one's a big one down at the goal line. And this is a real nice spurt by Willie in that the receiver really has position on him for a second, and he just overruns him. Didn't get a first down, but Rich Miller comes up big, a spiraling punt that'll roll for 70 yards. 70-yard net punt is something that you don't see very often, and it was a big play here to change the field position. And then your defense keeps them bottled up. Russ Strohecker here with the tackle, and uh, Jeremy Patty, who would be your defensive player of the week, would come through the tackle on this next play. Jeremy's really, uh, you know, he improved tremendously last year, great spring, and this is this first game where really he really played at the, the level that we're kind of expecting him to play. He's got to be a force. And again, the defense there giving them a short gain on third down and 15. And this play would result in 30 yards and penalties against Harvard. Phillips would be interfered with, and then some kind of an unsportsmanlike call against Harvard later. This is a combination penalty here. First of all, the, the kick interference, which is, and then there's a personal foul, which moves the ball full 20, 25 yards down the field and gives us great position. And one play, a touchdown, a great catch by Nopal. 50-yard play here, the, the uh, you know, the, obviously the defensive back falls down. Steve, great concentration, holding on. So Bucknell is up 28 to 7 when Rich Miller's extra point will go right through the middle of the goalposts, and Harvard would have another long drive, 14 plays, 79 yards. And this play here, I'm not so sure Ferrara got in. If he did, he didn't get in just barely on third down. Yeah, he, I'm not sure the ball is in, his head is in, and they gave him the benefit of the doubt there. Yeah, uh, I don't think that was their best uh, goal line effort that, I, that I've ever seen. 28 to 14 at the half. You have to feel very pleased. I think you guys were able to pretty much dominate, especially with the big play. The scoring part of it is a, is a big part of it. And uh, we play in pretty good defense. Uh, the last series of the half, uh, we weren't as excited about our defense in that situation. I think we got a little tired there. But other than that, we're playing together. We're playing well. We haven't changed the, the kind of a confidence or the, the, uh, the attitude level, even though we're in a strange situation. And I'm pleased about all those things. It looked to me like you guys had the superior talent, and you went out and showed them who was boss early. I don't know about that. I know that we made some plays, and that we, uh, you know, I was pleased with the way the guys executed. So Bucknell is in front 28 to 14 at the intermission. Last week, we took a look at John Caldwell coming back from knee injury. This week, we're going to visit with Jim Jaroshak. Mark Braver has the story. An ACL tear can be a career-ending knee injury. Recently, I spoke with Jim Jaroshak, who battled back from three knee injuries to beat the odds and return as the strong safety for the Bison in his senior year. It was my sophomore year against Lehigh, and uh, I was actually playing like a linebacker position that, that game because uh, we were kind of short on linebackers at the end of the year. It was like the ninth game. And uh, I was coming out to play linebacker spot, and he ran a toss to my side and I guess not being used to playing linebacker I didn't even look to the flanker to see if he was coming down the crack block from the side so I just kind of slid over to, like shuffle technique over and all of a sudden he hit me on my kind of my right shoulder my leg was playing it just it twisted back and I just felt my leg slide just slid right out on me and I knew right there something was wrong because my whole leg was just shaking Jim Jaroshak is slow to get up an extensive training program is key to fully recover from any knee injury. It all starts at, at weight training. Weight training is a big, uh, a big deal the first probably three months, four months, just doing uh, extensions and curls and working on your hip flexors. Because that, that, you lose that so quickly, and it takes a while to get back. Your hamstring is most important because uh, that, that's kind of an extra support while your ligaments heal. It gives you extra support on your, on your knee and shifting. And then they, they seem to work into, uh, about four months they seem to work into conditioning, starting to run and cutting. So I've been out in the field all, like all summer. I had a wounded therapist at, at home in Easton, Easton today. He'd work with me on uh, cutting and, and kind of inside. It was actually inside when I was good at therapy, but uh, they had a big area where you could start cutting and, and shuffling. Jim and I spoke about what it was like to return to the field after a year-long layoff from football. It felt good. I was a little nervous mentally just because I haven't, not having been out there in a the year. And it, it, the hardest part, I guess, with coming back is just getting back in that mental phase, getting back into reading certain defense or certain offenses and certain certain patterns. And that was my that was my hardest part on Saturday. I just 
I wasn't really worried physically about being able to play. I was just worried about mentally being able to come up and make the reads and make the tackles. Which all that that comes with. That's another thing you lose. That comes with just playing. And, and then, that's where I feel like I just got to get back a little bit there. I asked Jim what it meant to him to return to the Bison for his senior year. I kind of realized how much I would miss it if I passed up this last year that I could play. And um, even though people were telling me, just take a break, let it go, it'd be hard, like, 10 years down the road, just look back and say, I had a year I could have played when I was, and I was healthy enough to play. And I didn't, just because I was scared of not of hurting it again. I mean, I, and that would have been, to me, I would have regretted that. And we have, good, you know, all my buddies are, are seniors now, and, and, I, and it's fun to have one last year to play. And the game is exciting. If you, you, know, if you play, it's, you realize how exciting it is. And it's, it's just something I, I would have regretted if I didn't, if I didn't come back and play. Great story, Jim Jaroshek coming back from three different knee injuries at uh, one time or another during his career and has played well for you as a strong safety and a nickelback. Jim's a real determined guy and, uh, you know, every time you have a guy like Jim and talked about John last week that'll take that, do that extra something for the football team, makes a big difference in terms of ultimately how everybody feels about what's going on. You said as we were watching it, you thought Jim would make it back. I thought he would because I'm, Jim's a football player. He loves to play, and if there was a chance for him to be able to come back and play and to play with his classmates and play in this season, I knew that he was going to go after it. So just a matter of how well the, the rehab came along. As we last left you on the highlights, it was Bucknell leading Harvard 28-14 to because Bucknell deferred they would get the kickoff in the second half. Let's roll the videotape. And Coach, you almost lost here what you had gained in the first half with a, uh, with a tough break on the open kickoff in the second half. You know, it's the old thing. You go in the, at halftime and see, here we are. We'll come back out and play hard. And uh, this is not something you want to have happen here on the first play. But your defense was pretty well up to the task of limiting them to just a field goal. It, it was an important defensive series in that uh, you know, we were able to, to limit them to the field goal. This play, however, we were, we were fortunate in that they had this one bad snap that takes them really out of uh, position. Nice job, though, by Patrick Hannon to nail a 40-yard kick. Yeah, good, good kick. And, uh, you know, now we're starting to feel that maybe they're not really that far away. 28-17, Bucknell and Harvard would exchange punts, and then the field position would change as Travis Koff is able to knock them out of bounds on the nine. Once again, the, the kick game gives us the position uh, that uh, makes the game it's easier to play. It's easier to play the defense down here. Sack, David Todd coming from a blitzing free safety spot. A lot of others in white there as Bucknell refuses to let him out of the hole. And they're forced to punt from the end zone. And Mike Phillips come up with a short return, but a good return that's going to get you another good field. Position. Mike's been getting a lot of really important yards. The 10, 12, 15-yard returns are very important uh, yardage in the football game. Gloss again on the money. He was 14 of 17 on the day for 257 yards. He would throw five touchdowns, a school record, this being the fifth, and more importantly, no interceptions. Gloss rolling, just about running out of room, and finds Ted Stover in the back of the end zone to see the play again. It's a good play. It doesn't go exactly where we want from the beginning, but Rob is able to uh, not do the bad thing and actually to turn it around and make a, a good individual play here. Teddy comes up with the ball. You watch the uh, ground camera there follow the fake to Richard Lemon, and one of the things that I think makes Rob Gloss a very good quarterback is I think he's very deceptive with his ball fakes. Seems like he'll be very tough to read. Yeah, I think he does a good job with the ball handling, and uh, I think if you ask him, he'll tell you that when you know we're running it, the passing it makes it you know, the passing becomes easier, and obviously it's a lot of the passing is play-action passing, so the faking part of it is, is real important. Was it in the game plan to go as deep as often, beginning of the game? Well, the, the passes are normally designed where there are, are almost always deep alternatives, and really the defense tells you what you can get and what you can't get. We, we will, though, however, always try and take some shots where we're just simply, we know from the get-go that we're going to throw it deep. And, uh, you know, that's just going to be a certain number in any game. Let's pick up more highlights in the second half. Again, Bucknell is now leading by the score of 35 to 17. Harvard would have the football again, and Andy Welty came back in the second half after being shaken up in the first half. Yeah, Andy rebounded. He had a little knee sprain, came back, and uh, Andy's playing a lot. He's playing in the middle. He's playing on the outside and doing a good job across the board. Get a break here when uh, Mike Phillips is able to cover his own punt in the end zone. 
close call. I thought maybe they were going to say it was a safety. Right, no, it's a muff. He never really did uh, control that ball, and it was a good call. Some good tough uh, running by um, Steve McHugh. He'd catch the ball here from Rob Glush, short of the first down, and then take it across the market. Steve will bang you, and he's also a guy that once he gets going can move pretty good. Here's Bucknell's final touchdown, the fake reverse, and once Lemon got around the corner, forget it. And he got a little air out there and uh, kind of took off. It was a great play. And Longest play uh, run from scrimmage this year in the Patriot League. We'll watch it from ground level. And again, Harvard bit on the uh, on the reverse to Phillips. You've got to play a lot of years to see that play go all the way to the house like that. And uh, I think last time I saw that was 10 years ago. We, everything worked right. And then again, good kick coverage. Mike Haggerty on special teams is going to rattle the Harvard return man here with a big hit. And again, your defense uh, has been able to be up to the task again against Harvard. They would only get one more score in the second half. They had a lot of trouble getting out and moving. All right, we came back and played a much more intense defensive game in the second half. And uh, I was pleased with that. Well, he making the stop there, and as the fourth quarter begins, he did a nice job with uh, controlling the clock, running the football. Bob Horse and Craig Svensson in the backfield picking up 10 yards a chunk. Yeah, a couple of guys there that are outstanding football players that, that really haven't had a lot of carries in the game so far, and they're pretty fresh, and I think you can see exactly what it is. They can both do some things. Gives you a lot of depth in the backfield. Horse ripping off 10 more, and then at the end of the game, Willie Jackson would come up with his second interception of the game. Back of quarterback in for Harvard. This is a fair catch interception down here. But uh, good position and uh, ends the football game. And the Bison received the congratulatory handshakes, 42-23 over Harvard. The 64 team used it as a big springboard to the Lambert Cup. Can similar results be expected off of this win against Harvard? It's, it's an important thing, I think, as we look back and we see some of the other victories in Bucknell history that have been important, and uh, we know about that. Uh, still for us, the most important thing is that we won the game. We had a good time. Uh, we got a little better, and we know as we look at the game, there's still some things we've got to get better yet to come back and play Princeton this week. We had a chance to speak with Ed Berman and Richard Lemon after the ball game. We'll have those interviews, and then when we return from the timeout, we'll be back to visit with our special guests on today's show, quarterback Rob Gluss and safety John Henry. But first, the Berman and Lemon interview. What do you think was the best thing about your game here this afternoon? Uh, my uh, constant pursuit of the quarterback. I thought I was always around the quarterback, bothering him. It looked to me like that the defensive line all day kind of forced him maybe to throw a few times before he wanted to throw. I thought so, too. Uh, again, we practiced a lot of uh, pass rush this weekend, this week. And uh, just uh, Coach Meenan showed us a few new moves we could use. And it just it really worked. It was really, really fun to get play there. Give us a view of your 65-yard touchdown return. It looks like once you got around a corner, that was it. Yeah, um, all I had to do was get the corner. I beat the one man, and then number six, I think it was, was coming on hard. I just tried to look at him a little bit, get a little cocky, and just told him he could catch me. And once I crossed, I told him it was too late. How important is this win for the Bison against Harvard, a team that's normally one of the better teams in the Ivy League? Uh, it feels real good. It gives us a lot of confidence. That's two in a row, and we'll go into Princeton next week see what we can do there. This is the Bison Weekend Review. I'm John Terry. Bucknell's women's tennis team is now a perfect 8-0 after beating Delaware 5-4 on Saturday. Senior Christina Luter won her 44th career dual singles match, and she needs just three more to become Bucknell's winningest singles player ever. The men's soccer team lost a 3-0 decision to Colgate on Saturday. Bobby Newman scored three second-half goals for the Red Raiders. The women's soccer team's four-game unbeaten streak came to an end as they also lost to Colgate 3-0 on Saturday. Bucknell's 15th-ranked water polo team went 2-2 two two at the Navy Invitational this weekend. The Bison picked up narrow wins over Harvard and Washington and Lee after falling to two higher-ranked opponents. The men's cross-country team finished ninth at the prestigious Mountain West Classic in Montana on Saturday. Seniors Chris Priestaff and Steve Clark both finished in the top 30. Eight teams in the field were either nationally ranked or listed just outside the top 20. For Bucknell Football 94, I'm John Terry. joined on the set of Bucknell 90, Football 94 by two of the seniors who played a big part in Bucknell's 42-23 win over Harvard, and that's quarterback Rob Gluss and safety John Henry. And Rob, we'll start with you, 14 of 17. Why did everything work so well for you Saturday? You had a great game. <laughs> I'm not really sure why. I guess I guess I owe a lot to Richie <laughs> when he's running as well as he is. Uh, you know, makes throwing the ball really easy, but <clears throat> a lot of the touchdowns were just, uh, you know, well-executed plays. Receivers are really making some really big plays for us, and I think that's uh, something that has to keep happening if we're going to win a lot of games this year. 
We were talking with uh, Coach Maranzana about the wide open plays to Mark Gentile. Was that something that when you come to the line, do you have choices of several things to make? Yeah, exactly. We had seen that on the tape of their Columbia game. They had lined up in that defense in that situation before, and we were like, if they do it again, we're going to come out, either throw that pass or a run. It was like a first or second down play. Both times we called it, we came out, and they were in the exact right defense, and we just executed the play. John, is the secondary coming together right now? You've had some movement with Mark Miller moving from the corner and uh, Willie Jackson in there new. Is, is it becoming a pretty good unit? Yeah, I think we're a very good unit right now. Uh, Willie Jackson came in last week and performed really well this week. Uh, he was Rookie of the Week. Mark Miller's playing free safety well, and I'm consistent at strong safety, so I think we're really good. Is it a tough position to get everybody together? It seems like there's to be a lot of teamwork in that position. Yeah, without a doubt. Mark Miller, he's the quarterback back there. He calls all the defensive plays uh, and all the formations and whatnot. He's a leader back there, and uh, we always try to reiterate what he says. Mm. And you know, get get the communication down, and then you know we're set. We've got a couple of plays for both of these guys to look at. We'll show you Rob Gluss's play right now. The play we've selected is the uh, fifth touchdown to break the school record. Rob, why don't you tell us about this one going to Ted Stokes? This is we're faking ice out of Richie right now, and I'm rolling. I'm looking for two receivers, and I'm not finding anybody. So uh, finally, uh, just running for my life pretty much. And Ted did a nice job finding a little hole in the back of the end zone, and got lucky to find him. What can you see when you're down there being chased? Can you see as much as you want? Oh, uh, well, not really. Not, not enough. You can never see enough. Uh, you know, you come out looking for your you know, primary guys right away, and then you're just buying time, trying to you know, hope somebody will move around and find a hole, and that's exactly what Teddy did. So a lot of it is after the play's run and you're sprinting out, people are kind of ad-libbing? Yeah, exactly. Let's take a look now at John's interception that uh, set Bucknell up uh, inside the 40-yard line. John, when the Harvard team breaks a huddle, what are you looking for as a strong safety here? Well, we're in a man-to-man -man defense, which allows me to be aggressive on the outcuts because uh, they have the free safety help me out on the inside. I saw the wide receiver break on the out, and I was just really aggressive on it. And unfortunately, it was a poorly thrown ball, and I intercepted it. I guess you make a lot of living on mistakes sometimes, yeah. right? What about the strong safety? Is that a position that also has a lot of run support, too? Yeah, that's what I really enjoy the most. I love playing against the run. I'm not really a pass guy. Uh, the run is a lot of fun for me. I like being in cover three, which gets me closer to the line, and uh, I like banging heads with fullbacks and whatnot. Well, this coming week against Princeton looks like they like to run the ball, so it sounds like your position will be pretty much then in the middle of things. Yeah, I'm looking forward to it. Rob, as we head down the middle of the season now, what do you think the team has to do to improve, to keep getting better and keep putting W's on the board? Oh, I mean, I think you know we're, we are improving every week. Obviously, we're putting you know more points on the board every week. I think now what we just have to do is be more consistent, get rid of the, all the turnovers. We didn't. Uh, I don't think we had any turnovers uh, on offense side of the ball. We had a couple special teams turnovers, but. Just keep not making mistakes and keep executing the way we are, and I think we'll be all right. John, in what ways do you think you're better now as you've reached your, your senior year? You played a lot last year as a starter, as a junior, and, and some as a freshman and sophomore. Uh, I just feel really comfortable back there right now. Everything's clicking for me. Uh, I know all the offenses really well. I know what they're going to try to do to, uh, to the defenses, and I just you know react. So we finish up the interview. We've got two Dean's List students sitting here, seniors, outstanding students. Uh, Rob, what are your plans after this football season? Well, we're not really sure yet. We're going to try to find a job, I guess. It's a primary thing. Uh, you know, I'm a mathematics major, so uh, I've got a couple different ways I can go. I'm not really sure where I'm going to go yet. John, how about you? Well, I'm a history and political science major, so I'm trying to uh, apply to law school right now, preparing for my LSATs and getting all those applications and everything ready. Haven't taken it yet? Well, I've taken it in June, and I canceled the score because I thought I'd do poorly, so uh, I'm taking it again in December. Want to run for political office? Ah, uh, no, I don't think so. Well, you said political science, but maybe I thought <laughs> yeah. you'd be a good candidate here. Well, John and Rob, want to thank you for visiting with us on the program. Great game against Harvard, and uh, we'll talk to you guys later in the season. Thanks. Our guests, John Henry and Rob Gluss, Coach Lou Maranzana returns. We'll talk about the Tigers of Princeton as the show continues after this timeout. Since 1846, scholars have come together at Bucknell to ask questions and explore answers. Inspired by the fresh spirit of the newest students and the seasoned wisdom of the faculty, this meeting of minds fosters achievement. Bucknell professors enjoy national reputation, and Bucknell students are known for their intelligence. Their lively exchanges extend from classrooms and seminars to informal meetings in faculty offices and the campus snack bar. Bucknell is a comfortable place for the tradition of the classics and the demands of today's society. The arts, humanities, and sciences thrive alongside professional programs in engineering, education, management, and music. The environment for this growing diversity and the ongoing meeting of minds is a very beautiful campus in central Pennsylvania. Bucknell's stately buildings and beautiful trees and gardens provide an ideal collegiate setting. 
Bucknell with 3,300 undergraduates and over 260 faculty members who sustain the spirit that is this university and who carry it with them throughout their lives. At Bucknell University, we pride ourselves in doing intercollegiate athletics the right way. We're extraordinarily proud of our student athletes and their record of success in terms of Patriot League scholar athletes, academic All-Americans, and NCAA postgraduate scholarship winners. In addition, our graduation rate of student athletes has been number one in the country over the past three years. The goal of the athletic program at Bucknell University is to provide a competitive Division I experience for over 750 athletes in 26 men's and women's varsity programs. In order for us to enjoy our current level of success, we need your help. You can support our student athletes by joining the Bison Club. I'm certain that the self-satisfaction that you gain from assisting student athletes to have a quality competitive Division I experience will be well worth your while. On behalf of the student athletes at Bucknell University, thank you. For more information, write to the Bison Club in care of Bucknell University or call 717-524-1358. Back for the final minute of the show, we'll talk about Princeton coming up, and this looks like to be a pretty tough task. They were tied 3-3 at the half with Colgate and held them to one first down and won 29-3. We see a team that really has outstanding talent uh, that's kind of coming together and emerging, particularly in the second half of this game. It's going to be home. They're huge, and uh, we're looking forward to playing them. Well, Coach, I want to thank you for being with us here on the show. Next week, we'll take a look at highlights from the Princeton Tiger game, hopefully another victory. Thanks, Bob. For Head Coach Lou Maranzana and our guests, Rob Gluss and John Henry, this is Bob Beeler speaking, reminding you to tune in again next week, same time, same station, for another program. Again, it's Bucknell and Princeton. They'll be playing Saturday in Princeton. If you have a chance, go on down to Palmer Stadium. It'll be a 1 o'clock kickoff. Thanks for watching. Good night, everybody. <laughs>